Hello everyone, this is Teresa Benson, Product Marketing Manager here at Redline Controls, continuing our series on Crimson 3.1. In our last episode, we talked about scaled values. In this case, we have a value that can fluctuate between 0 and 32,767, and we're scaling that to between 0 and 10. And so we can see in the number where we have three decimal point, or three digits after the decimal point, we can see that um, the value is definitely changing as this increments. Um, however, we aren't going to see a change here until it gets to about 4.5 down here. And we can see a big old number, but it's not really there right now, in the upper left-hand corner. So what's going on here? In one of the early episodes, we actually assign that three spaces to the left of the decimal point. So everything looks fine here. However, uh, we need to see what this value is, and I'm going to double click. I could also do Alt Enter, right click, and go to Properties. I see that this is the data tag level. Let's go look at the data tag level really quick. All right, I'm on the data tag level. If I go to Format, I've only given it three places. Well, it can go up to 32,767, which means it needs five characters. So I have given a five. Uh, digit number only three spaces to live in so that's why we're getting the error we are so I need to increase that number I'm going to choose five now let's look at our display page really quick as soon as I come over here everything looks fine but the instant I click I get those red lines and that's because the space I allotted for that number originally banked on only three characters because at the time max level the largest it got to was 151 so I need to make this either a little bit bigger or I need to make the font a little bit smaller so I'm gonna go ahead and alt enter I could right click and go to properties I could double click on this let's get in here and change the font size well sure it's at 72 right now let's pick pick something slightly smaller like maybe 36 or 48 points. Okay, click OK. And now the red lines go away without me having to change the size of that uh, uh, area. If we go ahead and send that down, we're going to see that change. That's going to take a bit. We need to get up to at least a thousand before we see whether or not that change uh, took effect. But uh, I'll assure you, and you'll see in future episodes, that it worked just fine. Okay. So today, I wanted to show you that you can uh, do things um, with our primitives, with our symbols, without needing to assign uh, formulas and data tags and that sort of thing. So what I'm going to do is just drop this down here and let's add a second light. Okay, so I'm going to go to primitives, home, and go to our indicators and I want a blue light this time. Okay, so I can just drag it over here and now let's say I want it aligned with this one. I'm going to right click align with center of this. So now I know it's perfectly aligned. And let's say I want this to all line up to the left. So I can either click them all or I can select and grab. And I want the left-hand side to all align with the left-hand side of that blue light. Okay. If I send this down right now, nothing is going to change as it relates to the blue light. The blue light is going to remain off because I haven't told it how, why, when to change, okay? We need to do that now. In previous episodes, what we did is we assigned a, a flag tag a formula that said if the level goes above the set point or is equal to the set point, turn on the light or don't turn on the light. Well, we can actually do stuff straight in the primitives themselves, so let's do that. I'm going to double click on here, and I need to give it uh, a decision uh, formula that tells it whether or not to be on or off. So let's say instead of um, when it's at the uh, set point, maybe it's when it's at twice the set point value. So we would say level greater than or equal to two times set point. 
All right. So I haven't written a line of code anywhere. I am in a primitive and I am saying that when the level is greater than or equal to twice the set point, I want the blue light to come on. Let's send that down. And the first light comes on and when that value gets to 60, we're going to see the blue light come on. It's that easy. It's really simple to work with our primitives in order to do uh, a variety of things to give your operators information at their fingertips. Look for more tips and tricks on how to work with our primitives and do more with Crimson 3.1 in our next episode.